What's up guys, hope you're well. Today we tackle one of the most critically acclaimed and fondly remembered Super Nintendo games out there, Mega Man X. Capcom gave us plenty of Mega Man action on the NES, and they were determined to do more of that on the Super Nintendo. All of Nintendo's mascots were dressing up for 16-bit, and Mega Man was doing the same. My earliest memories of Mega Man X were when I was too young to play. I had to watch my older brother and his friends from the sidelines while my tiny child brain tried to make sense of what was on screen. It wasn't until a used game sale at GameStop when I bought both Mega Man anniversaries for the GameCube. I remember looking at the back of the case and recognizing yet another familiar old game that I never understood how to play. Even as a kid, I always loved the stage select concept. Sitting here with these mug shots and this menacing music, it just feels so cool. Staring down those bosses and deciding who you try to take on next. Actually reaching them for a fight was another story. These Mavericks were always ready to own you and your dreams of ever clearing their stages. I vividly remember around 9th grade spending over 8 hours midday on the X Anniversary Collection. You wanna know how far I got? through only two of these fights. It was hard enough getting to a boss fight, but what usually happened shortly after wasn't pretty. All those game overs, so demoralizing. Hopping from stage to stage, hoping to find an easy one, which you soon realized didn't really exist. Similar stuff happened to me over a few long stretches with the other Mega Man anniversary too. They were brutal, but inch by inch, just so, so satisfying. You could say Mega Man X has a bit of its own mega learning curve right after its intro stage due to the massive importance of which level you start on. And this isn't even talking about grabbing the right weapon for the next boss's weakness. This has to do with the dash upgrade. On your first time playing Mega Man X, until you get far enough on Chill Penguin, this game could feel like a real head scratcher. You're bound to wish you could go faster and jump further in order to compete with its awesome challenge. But if you were totally clueless, you'd never assume that you could get faster. Mega Man has gotten a lot of neat weapons and upgrades over the years, but never has gotten speed boosts. But this is Mega Man X we're talking about. Dr. Light has a handful of upgrades hidden out there to enhance your abilities. If, and that's a big if, you can manage to find them. There are so many things out there to help enhance Mega Man X, from his arm cannon gaining another charge level, armor that cuts damage in half, massively growing your health meter, refilling your health meter, to even a helmet that can break certain blocks or handle debris damage from overhead. The levels are dangerous and your enemies are deadly. We've got 8 Mavericks to get through and 4 final levels on our way to defeat the new villain, Sigma. Be sure to charge your buster and fill that sub tank because I'm Jeff and this is Marmax Gaming. Mega Man X begins with an excellent opening stage, starting out strong with a futuristic city environment. First, just having to shoot or jump over a slow and low enemy, then a bigger one, requiring you to quickly pound out multiple shots. Next, floating enemies that you must jump up to reach. They do a perfect job at introducing the player to one new thing at a time. They don't hesitate to wow you with big enemy sprites that come in with amazing propeller sound effects. Although they're so big and take up so much of the screen, you can't get too close, even after they're dead. Yeah. 
they also force you to realize a really important new ability of your character. No more need for awkward little items near walls, because Mega Man X could scale the walls. Another difference you may notice is that your life bar is significantly smaller than it has been, which means you're going to have to really watch what you're doing here. After some jumps to avoid falling, and big jumps to test your reach, there's a big ship dropping these cars with lasers, which test how fast you can shoot, and how accurately you can jump. But even if you get hit a time or two, it's no big deal, because your first time meeting Vile, let's just say, you can't win this fight. You'll always lose, getting damaged until he captures you in one of the shots. Just when it looks like it could all be over, we witness one of the coolest interventions in classic gaming. At this point, Zero feels like a big and strong older brother. You can only dream of being as cool and tough as he is. As touched on earlier, Mega Man X has a fantastic level select screen. It really plays off your imagination with cool features like options to see the stage environment, you can check the sizes of your targets, which is so sweet. And you can even see where their forts are on this map, making the whole thing feel cohesive. It feels like you're in some high-tech bounty hunter lab, reading up on your target's locations, but these guys don't go down without a fight. Plus, whatever stage somebody chooses can and will greatly impact how they feel about the game, at least initially. Let's just say you can easily spend hours making this game considerably harder on yourself without the most basic upgrade in the game, the dash which is what we find on the way to Chill Penguin. As we'll be seeing, the overall level design in Mega Man X is just beautifully executed. Every level fits their theme so well, and there's always a different set of enemies, plus the music is out of this world. All of these tracks are worth listening to, and the audio video of Mega Man X is just so good, it really speaks for itself. No amount of journalism could ever replace actually listening to these songs. Let's take a listen as we try out our new legs that change the game and the entire series forever. Getting to Chill Penguin. If you've played Mega Man for a while, it can be hard to remember just how far you've come. Every boss really does pack a punch, and mistakes aren't taken very lightly. Chill Penguin shoots out rocks, slides quickly at you, jumps around, and sometimes creates ice blockades that blow your way. It's so important to keep in mind what your offense can do. You have to be evasive, but look out for those charge shot openings, because they make a big difference. With one down and seven to go, I usually like to go Storm Eagle next. Chill Penguin's weapon is not the weakness for Storm Eagle, but he's another maverick that isn't too bad with just the buster. And of course, in classic Mega Man fashion, you're awarded the weapon of the Maverick that you defeated. And from Chill Penguin, we get Shotgun Ice. We take to the sky with another banger of a track, one of the most popular in the game.
It's honestly kind of crazy what you have to do to find some of these hard tanks. There are a couple of super tall belts to the right with little platforms and annoying little mechs that will try to grab onto you. Naturally, once you make it to the top, you would just head to the right. You'd really have to be dialed into your intuition to think, I better dash jump from the top over here to get up there. This is a heart tank, first of eight available for us, granting two pigs of a health bar increase, which means we can double it. If you get all eight of them, it's a 16 to 32 peg increase. Mega Man X does a great job at playing off of the themes with their stage design, so it only makes sense that we're high in the air. In a similar vein to Airman or Gyro Man, be careful to get the sub tank from Storm Eagle. Naturally, you'd keep running to the right after shooting down this turret, but Mega Man X is tricky. For a second time, we see how easily you can miss one of the four sub tanks. These are used like E tanks, except they stay on your menu after use, and you have to refill them once depleted. The dash upgrade is helpful to keep up your pace and clear all of the bottomless pits that you're tested with, like having to shoot out the flame turrets before you make the leaps. There's yet another upgrade on Storm Eagle stage, and it's pretty easy to find if you cared to slide down here, but you need the dash in order to reach it, dash jumping from the wall. This helmet's primary benefit allows you to smash blocks, which will only help you in just a handful of ways that we'll see in some other stages. I always thought it's pretty awesome the way you board this plane just to blow it all up before encountering Storm Eagle. Although we don't have the weapon weakness for Storm Eagle, it's fair to say that Dash is the biggest weakness of all, since it allows you to press through his gusts while shooting, racking up damage quickly. Storm Eagle will sometimes rise out of range, and he also sometimes vomits an egg that releases little birds too. But the most iconic thing he does is his dive bombing attack. Thanks to the Dash, it's now much easier to release the charge shots, hitting him on the way down until it's all over. After defeating Storm Eagle, you might notice that the background sky is scrolling upward, which means the aircraft is falling. We're about to see our first impact site with our next stage selection. You get Storm Tornado from Storm Eagle. It's a really large, multi-hit clearing gust, and it can honestly be really helpful. Onto our third stage with one of the most memorable fights with Spark Mandrill. We're in a power plant here full of electrical themed enemies with another one of the best tracks in the entire game. You may notice the broken glass and chunks of Storm Eagle plane laying on the ground. It's hard to not feel motivated and ready to thrash anybody that steps in your way. And with so many tank-like enemies, you'll have your mash tested constantly. As a result of the plane crashing here, it actually makes the level easier. Without the plane crash, there are these electrical pulses sent along the floor, and they're a pretty big nuisance, but you're able to proceed much easier when those circuits are broken. Storm Eagle's weapon, Tornado Storm, does a great job against the big enemies too. Speaking of that, there's a large mini-boss that packs quite the punch, and takes a surprising amount of shots too. Without the plane crash, it's much more dangerous with its electric attacks. Without though, you have a lot less to worry about. Totally understandable if this guy takes a few attempts. And it makes sense that there's an easier version of this level because it's pretty tough when the power is going. There are also a couple dark sections in this thing. Had to look it up. This is the only level you see this guy shooting across the screen. We also have an opportunity to snag our second hard tank. It won't come super easy. You're likely to probably see it, which is usually over half the battle. But holding dash and jump just right to get around the ledge can be a little tricky. It might even make a new player think they have to come back for it later. Mega Man X is one of those games that, if you give it enough time, you eventually develop a feel for, and as you're mashing, dashing all over the place, you kind of realize just how powerful of a character you are. The question becomes, how good are you at controlling Mega Man X? Coming up on the boss fight, we do have the weakness for Spark Mandrill. 
which most players would want because he's pretty relentless and can kill you quickly with just a few hits. The easy way through this is with your ice weapon from Chill Penguin. The shotgun ice stops Spark Mandrill in his tracks and does some extra damage. But if you've played this game for a while, going after this guy with your buster only is always a fun challenge, and his mix of charging, swinging along the ceiling, and pounding out electrical shots makes him a formidable foe. Flame Mammoth is a big son of a gun, and has a level as hot as you'd guess. Flame Mammoth's stage, if unaltered, looks like this. Plenty of heat elements, roaring fires, it's got an intense glow to it. It matches the theme perfectly, and the sprite art is pretty awesome. But seeing the stage played like this is borderline obscure footage at this point, because there are a handful of stage effects that take place based on a certain level you've beaten before it. And for Flame Mammoth's stage, beating Chill Penguin first gives it a freeze-over effect. And since anybody that plays Mega Man X is often doing it as fast as possible, it's easy to forget what this stage naturally looks like. Fortunately, the lava is not instant death. Although it makes the stage tougher, and especially without the dash, playing it through this way is still really cool. And it also means not having to backtrack to Chill Penguin, since you already have the flame weapon, to get that heart tank. If you manage to get through this additional challenge, you'll see this heart piece and be left to wonder, how in the world do I get down there? Once everything is frozen over, there are no heat hazards, and that means you're free to grab this heart down here in the corner. We also get to use our dash and helmet upgrade to reach this hidden area for the beefed up arm cannon, which gives another charge level and allows you to charge all of your Maverick weapons too. Compared to any weapons you've gotten so far in the series, this extra layer really blows out of the water. These are pretty cool. It gives stage clearing special attack vibes for most of them, although you can also get protection shields and invincibility. I'll go ahead and show, at least for curiosity's sake. And believe it or not, there's still another important upgrade to grab, our second sub-tank. Meaning we could refill our entire health bar twice, if they're both full. And that's an insane ability for the most dire of consequences. You can have up to four of these, although we're only going to grab two on this run. I'll point out the others as well. If you've played Mega Man X a few times, this is the level you'll get used to seeing. Which is a shame, but it's not really your fault since it only makes sense to grab the speed upgrade as soon as possible. The stage in its natural form is still a fun thing to remember and admire though. Flame Mammoth isn't too terrible of a stage, especially if you played Chill Penguin first. Once a player knows Chill Penguin has the dash upgrade, there's no reason to not hit that stage first every time, unless you want to remain a much slower and less capable character. Not to mention the extra time you'll spend slowly moving through stages, as opposed to rapidly dashing through as much as possible. Flame Mammoth is another cool boss fight, and subtle variety like a slowly moving floor is nice. Flame Mammoth has a couple projectiles, he shoots fireballs from his trunk, fling sticky tar that sets you up for his quaking jumps that'll stun Mega Man just like Gutsman did to us in the very first entry. Flame Mammoth's weakness is Storm Eagle's tornado shots, but even without that, he's not a terribly hard fight. You just have to be ready to jump to avoid the quaking and don't get trapped against the wall, make quick exits with dash wall jumps, and you can outpace any damage you may receive from those fireballs. You get a flamethrower attack, which is pretty neat, and we'll have use for it soon. Four to go before the final stretch, let's take on Armored Armadillo. It shouldn't come as a surprise that we have another amazing track in the cavernous base, as we take a ride on the rails, crashing through a bunch of miners, the robotic birds, and bats. Mega Man X does a great job with its variety, because it has every level feeling different from another. 
not to mention the distinct settings, music, and unique enemies that are all done so well on each stage. There's another heart tank to grab up ahead as this machine clears the way. It's kind of a cheeky design where you'd naturally want to keep your distance and wait behind, but just a little bit later you realize that you needed to destroy the machine before it got to the heart, since now you can't reach, or have the foresight to land in the tiny space on the right as you're falling, and then dash ahead to nab the heart. If you're behind it, to destroy it in time, you can mash the crap out of your buster, but it really helps if you have that flame mammoth attack. The third sub-tank is to the left of this first bulldozer. After carefully baiting it out, and avoiding those spikes, you get to snag sub-tank number three. They let us enjoy one last fun ride, and it's just a really cool part of the game. It's such a fun idea that they implement it, and it does a lot for the level. The end of the level is bound to probably catch a new player off guard, as you're launched across the bottomless pit. You have to jump off in order to move on to Armored Armadillo's lair, but if you're too late, the momentum won't allow for it. If you've seen my list of top 10 hardest Mavericks with Buster only, no upgrades, then you already know this guy has the most stubborn defense of any of the Mavericks. You could say he lives up to his name with his top-notch armor, as he only takes one peg of damage even for charge shots. And he likes to deflect most shots too. If you find it necessary, you can use Spark Mandrill's weapon to do more damage and it gets his armor off of him too. You have to appreciate the extra animations when you use a Maverick's weakness in this game. It's always so cool and a thoughtful little touch. It doesn't just do more damage, you get to see something entirely new. Let's take it to another one of the toughest Mavericks, Launch Octopus. It's fair to say that, in most games, water levels haven't exactly gained the reputation as fun, but with Mega Man X, it just means that you have much more freedom. You can use the dash jump to clear so much of the stage at once in multiple spots, but it would seem the developers were aware of this possibility, because they made sure to stop the player for some pretty solid mini-boss fight encounters, just to ensure that you can't skip all of its challenge. These submarines launch plenty at you, and it gets hard to avoid, especially when they come just off the floor and above your head then they really aren't playing around when spikes are thrown into the picture. It's not just the projectiles you have to worry about, it's the pushing and pulling of the current too. You could see why walking into a fight like this with base health and no dash would leave someone wondering just how hard this game is. Instant death if you are pushed or pulled into the spikes. It's not easy, and you have to mash those shots to get out as soon as possible. It's not just the couple of submarine tanks that stop you on the way. There's also this huge spiked snake thing which is really a surprise, and I think having these two different large sprites mini-boss in the same level shows a lot of care and creativity. Speaking of creative, that's exactly what you need to be in order to find the hidden upgrades on Launch Octopus's level. As we've seen, they're honestly all pretty tricky and challenging to find on your own, but riding the water beam up in order to destroy this surface level boat that so many players would easily just move past without ever realizing it's up there. This will have the boat sink down, crashing through the floor, and reveals another underwater snake mini-boss, with the addition of spikes. With as large amount of life that you can't see, and less safe areas to stand, it can be pretty sketchy to take him out. It's especially important to not overextend or rush your opportunities to shoot at a tethered tail. You have to take your time and let it come with you in order to get through this safely. Moving on to Launch Octopus. You have to be mashing your shot and be on your toes for this fight.
His little fish shoot out so quickly, and he is overall a pretty challenging boss, with or without his weakness of the rolling shield that we got from Armored Armadillo. Wow. The dash is super helpful because it helps you pull away from his spinning that draws you in. The rolling shield does more damage and blocks the fish, but still, you can expect for him to continue to hit you a few times. It's pretty much a cycle of him jumping and twirling to draw you in with his currents, and then surviving his onslaught of his projectiles. After getting his homing missiles, there's just two left to go. Here comes Boomer Kawanger. When you're used to the theme of elements and animal names, Boomer Kawanger sure does stand out and make you ask, what in the world is that? Boomer is short for boomerang, something that he throws, and Kawanger is actually a term for beetle. Boomer Kawanger's level is unique too. It's like the Elecman stage of Mega Man X. It's even complete with a familiar thumping bass. You spend the level going up, up, and up some more, and that does end up getting kinda tricky. With all those enemies out there every step of the way with some different platforming situations, it absolutely helps to have the dash once again, because using those two buttons together on the wall gets you all kinds of more wiggle room on these jumps. Holding the charge as you ascend further into the sky is important to continue clearing enemies, but that can be pretty cumbersome holding three buttons between the dash, jump, and shoot. I've always played using these three buttons on the face of the controller, which can honestly be pretty demanding, but changing it to the shoulder buttons makes this a lot less complicated. There's plenty of times in the game where it just makes sense to keep moving ahead quickly, especially when enemies come back if you accidentally respawn them. So at this point, it's certainly nice to have grabbed a half dozen hearts for the solid stack of extra health. Boomer Kowanger's heart container requires playing the stage twice because you need his weapon that you get from beating him. Speaking of the boomerang snagging us upgrades, it also retrieves the fourth sub tank if we felt like going back for that on Spark Mandrel. You need to try heading to the bottom right of these rooms with ladders, then you can see the sub tank a good distance from the wall, and it kind of trolls you at first since the boomerang won't reach it, but only if you release it at the top of your jump will the boomerang then swing down and retrieve the fourth sub tank. But as mentioned, only snag the two for this run. It's kind of a small side note, but I really like the hallway into the boss room. I think it looks so cool the way it's connecting two towers. Boomer Kowanger can be a challenging and annoying fight, with how he likes to rush in repeatedly and overtake your space. But charge shots do push him back and deal three pegs of damage, and if you're comfortable up on the wall, you'll find yourself jumping up there, dropping down to shoot, and basically repeating that while looking out for Boomer's boomerangs. Boomer Kowanger is quite the presence. All of his quick dashing and teleportation can be kind of annoying to deal with. Fortunately, the dash makes it much easier, and between charging your buster and dashing to the wall, if you don't just end up using the homing torpedoes, he's not too bad to finish off. And it's a good thing to unlock those boomerangs, because we saved one of the hardest Mavericks for last. The last Maverick to take down is Sting Chameleon. It's another nicely executed outdoor level, with some similar enemies to Chill Penguin, except everything is themed as woodland critters, as opposed to snowbound. There's also marshy, muddy areas where you'll start to slowly sink in, which can make things a little interesting. There's already plenty of enemies to shoot, but to keep things super fun out here, we get another mech, and it's always fun to plow through these stinkers while feeling safe. Just punching them right in their stupid face, speeding along with the dash too. There's actually the most substantial upgrade on this level, aside from the dash. Going above the cave reveals a secret boss fight, and beating him gives you armor, which effectively doubles your health. I actually didn't pick this up for my playthrough, just doing this fight for footage. I've used it before in other runs, but it's such an insane upgrade we at least had to talk about it. 
Since this thing cuts damage you receive in half, this is a real godsend for any players struggling with the earlier in levels. If Mega Man X is giving you way too hard of a time, you can always seek this thing out early. The only problem is, between you and the armor, there's this giant boss with a ton of health and no life bar. It's honestly the longest boss fight in the game. You have to get down his pattern to avoid jumping, then jump over his claw stretch. The other issue though, is that its weak point is this tiny red eye. You have to jump to reach that. The fight is a huge test of patience. For the longest time, based on sound, I thought Storm Eagle's tornado helps you inflict the most punishment at a rapid rate. I mean, just listen to that damage. Its weakness is actually the boomerang, and it requires about 18 direct hits to finish this thing off. So you go above the cave for the body armor, you also go down what looks like a bottomless pit below the cave. There's a heart tank reachable only after beating Launch Octopus, since that results in this water flooding the forest. Using a well-placed dash jump right from the edge is what it takes for you to snag this next heart. And now that we've been above the cave and under the cave, now we go through the cave, and that's where the helmet protects you from falling rocks. Moving on to Sting Chameleon. He's one of the toughest Maverick fights out there. With your buster, the charge shot only does 2 damage, plus his ceiling is lined with instant death spikes. Sting Chameleon was the most mentioned Maverick on my top 10 hardest Mavericks without upgrades on who was missing. He just barely missed at number 11. But believe me, I understand. Sting Chameleon can feel downright impossible, and you have to know where to stand in order to influence his behavior. If you're playing scared and constantly hug the wall, he will come to you and you'll pay for it. He'll leave you wondering where you can stand to be safe. But if you step into a space that he could move into, he will be forced to attack you from there, and you use the space to dash away. The many dropping spikes are of course about as alarming as they look. They come super fast and they're tricky to avoid, and that's why coming here with plenty of health is always a good idea. You can of course make this a less difficult fight with his weakness, the boomerang, and repeatedly hit him down from the ceiling until he's defeated. With all 8 Mavericks defeated, it's now time to cover Mega Man X's endgame. There are 3 more tests on the way to Sigma, and in classic nut-crunching Mega Man fashion, your password will not bring you past the first of these stages. Mega Man games always find a way to make themselves that much tougher on the home stretch. We briefly meet Zero outside the first Sigma stage, as he amps you up to say, this is finally it. And that's where we plan a return to Sigma's fortress at night. After blasting all of these turtles, this first section of small hovering platforms shows you that they're not playing around anymore. You're over a bottomless pit, and there's plenty of these little copter heads that like to go right where you need to go, and it really tests your ability to quickly get rid of them with charged shots and quick mashing, without falling into the pit below to your doom. It's important to remember though, you have other weapons that can help. The tornado gun is great at tying up a lot of space and clearing things out. The homing missiles are also really nifty here, if you're struggling to get through. Crazy enough though, and luckily for people that really can't handle this, Mega Man X gives you yet another easy way to do things, since you can just wall jump up the side of the cliff. It's an important test though, because with all of your health upgrades and 4 sub tanks, you'd probably feel pretty invincible, yet Mega Man X reminds you that all of your armor and abundance of health is only helpful on solid ground. It's really cool the way these final levels are paced, as tougher enemies return from different levels. We also get to see a couple of Mavericks along the way too. And since we can charge our weapons, we have a couple more options like the shield from Armored Armadillo, or the invincibility from Sting Chameleon. There are definitely more enemies, but since you can be so beefed up, it doesn't really matter. After we make our way up to this boss door, we run into Vile and Zero hot on his trail.
they dash through the door on the right, and you can hear the commotion of their fighting as you try to catch up. And lo and behold, we have Zero and Vile, just like in the beginning of the game. And naturally, with all of your upgrades and additional health, you might think that you could actually beat him. But Vile with his droid is just invincible once again. On your first playthrough, it kind of feels like you might actually have a chance. But sure enough, you are captured once more. And just like in the beginning of the game, our friend Zero has something to say about it. While Zero's sacrifice managed to take out the mech, we still have Vile ready to finish us off. Vile does jet back and forth pretty fast, and jumps up to release some orbs. He's actually not that insane to get used to, and if you are having a tough time, you can always use the homing missiles, because those will definitely hit him and they do wreck his health pretty well. He dashes around quickly. You have to stay on your toes and be ready with those charge shots. We then talk to Zero, who informs us of his dire state, with him taking too much damage from the blast. It's now up to us, or you as the player, to carry the torch, and march ahead bravely for Zero, just as he's done for you twice in a row. There are quite a bit of enemies and ways to get hurt through the hallway and up the shaft. It's yet another example of where you could totally suck at Mega Man X, but still get through based on the power-ups you have. I primarily use the Buster across every Mega Man game, and as a player that's trying to appreciate the game and its challenge, I think it's an important thing to do, instead of just running through it without any risk. But anyway, we eventually reach a familiar foe with our first Maverick rematch. Round 2 with Boomer Kawanger. As you can start to tell, these final levels have more of a marathon feel to them, with multiple tough spots and bosses every single stage. But since we're all well upgraded and no weaknesses if we need to, it's not really that much of a problem with these rematches. A pretty frustrating and unique type of boss is coming up though with this gigantic spider. At first, it doesn't move too fast. After each hit to its weak point, it does come back a bit faster, often dropping a clump of spiders first. And those spiders are too low for standard shots, keeping a charge ready is super important for them and also to make the most out of these openings. It may take a little while for some players to notice, I know it did for me when I first played a long time ago, but those bars in the background, the way they lay out is the track of the spider so it dictates how it moves. Your eyes have to quickly track where the spider will go and dash out of that space before it does. Under the pressure, it's totally reasonable to make mistakes and read it wrong. The way this fight works, it's really random to mention, but this specific skill reminds me of the Mario Party minigame that requires you to quickly read the piping in order to choose the right spot for the treasure chest, so it'll ultimately reach you and not somebody else. I imagine there are other games with this specific type of skill, but it's unique enough and these are the only two that I've played and would love to know if you guys can think of any others. The good thing is, you're at a point where you could have the armor and a bunch of hearts, if you need it, but with enough speed and some luck, you'll finally blast the spider to hell and move on to the second Sigma level. The second stage is when we see even more Mavericks, and the level design is particularly annoying with stretches of going through a lot of stubborn enemies. It's not hard to imagine at all how much tougher these sections would be without any upgrades, but as we've seen before, you can use your shield or invincibility. But even without that, at least to start, it's not so bad. First Maverick we encounter is Chill Penguin. He wasn't even that bad with the Buster, but now we can use his weakness, our flamethrower, to make him even easier. And as mentioned before, Mega Man X has those cool unique animations for the Maverick weaknesses.
after going upward through a shaft, which, like everything else, could be super tough or super easy, depending on your upgrades and strategy. We get to the second easiest maverick with Storm Eagle. It's kind of cool food chain wise that the chameleon sting would be the weakness, but just like Chill Penguin, Storm Eagle's not even that tough with your buster, so it's another easy fight overall. After another vertical climb through a shaft through more enemies, however you decide to go about that, we get to this stage's final boss. And this one's pretty tricky. So these two eyes are the weak point. So you have to look out for when these balls come your way, and the color of the eye determines what they'll do. And these walls close in, so you have to constantly be holding against the wall to use your wall jump, while avoiding this weird thing as it bounces back and forth. It's yet another fight that changes quite a bit if you decide to use the weakness, which is the Sting Chameleon Shot, and not only does it do more damage, but it makes it easier to hit your target. Obviously all these fights are made that much easier if we have the body armor, but we're doing this the challenging way. But be prepared to spend some more time here if you're just going to use the buster, which is what I did. It's more so the length of the fight and the damage done to Mega Man that can make this one difficult. But at the end of the day, it is pretty simple, so it's not that bad to figure out. And of course you have to look out for those instant kill spikes at the bottom. After getting through this strange face boss, we're on to Sigma level 3. And overall, this stage is pretty simple. It's where they dump the other five Maverick fights onto us. So we once again take on Armored Armadillo, slice away at Sting Chameleon, then we go toe to toe with Spark Mandrill. And if those three guys weren't tough enough in a row, we then have Launch Octopus. So you can see the weight of the difficulty on Sigma 3 is having four of the toughest Mavericks in a row, followed by Flame Mammoth. Whether it's your Buster, or the Storm Tornado to make it even easier, we are now on our way to Stage 3's boss. And it's another pretty bizarre fight. The Sigma bosses are pretty unique and creative. This thing starts out slow, but it slides back and forth, and gets faster and faster. And its top and bottom come out of rhythm, and if you get hit against the wall, it does massive damage to you, especially without the body armor. And once its health gets to a certain point, that's when it charges these huge orbs that you just have to get the timing down for. Otherwise it's gonna smack you for the rest of your life. The boomerang is its weakness. But once again, it can be done without the armor and just the buster if you can hang in there and learn its pattern well enough. Speaking of refilling your sub tanks, prepare to do a whole lot of that on this final stretch. That's honestly the whole reason why these little enemies are on the wall on your last climb up. There are three stages of the Sigma fight, and just saying, you remember this starting point and this climb for a very long time, especially after the first time you embark on taking down Mega Man X. It's not a challenge that comes lightly at all, especially if you manage to get here, missing plenty of important upgrades. And honestly, many of them are so well hidden and pretty cryptic, it's easy to miss plenty of them, because so many feel like secrets. Fighting against the Robodog is an intricate little pattern between how he runs at you, his jumping, and those big elemental attacks. I honestly enjoyed learning it with the Buster, although Ice is easier, since it does more damage, plus it's less likely to miss with its Ricochet. It's hard at first, but eventually you get a sense for his behavior, and how to best avoid him, and his projectiles. The second phase of the fight is with Sigma, with his lightsaber, and he's super dangerous since he inflicts heavy damage. The best way to fight him ends up being pretty simple and weird, the way you have to cling to a wall the entire time. 
but it's still easy to screw up. He also deflects shots when standing, so it can be a little tricky since you can only damage him as he's jumping back and forth. Spark is his weakness, but even still, it takes a fair amount of shots to get him down. But then we get to the third form. Oh god, the third form is something otherworldly. This thing is freaking terrifying. What is with this music? It sounds and looks as if we've entered hell. I mean, this is one of the most intimidating and punishing fights in gaming history. Shooting those orbs across the ground. Frequent deadly bolts of lightning shooting out of those moving spiked hands. To quickly jerk towards you with little warning. Managing to jump on these isn't good enough though. That'll get you shocked. You have to be on the edge and manage to shoot the top of his head. The problem is that the platform is regularly too low and eventually the other hand comes over to make things really tough to stay up there. Then falling down leaves you at risk for more lightning orb abuse and those sweeping flamethrowers. This thing even breathes fire with so much going on and so many moving parts, it's not hard to see why this final fight can be quite the roadblock. It's highly recommended to at least have a couple of sub tanks, especially if you don't have the body armor. Armored Armadillo's weapon at least does some more damage, but it's nothing too significant. And if it doesn't go without saying, every single time you die, you have to fight the dog and Sigma's humanoid form before the final beast, which is exactly why, as I mentioned before, this final climb up this shaft is going to be burned into your brain, and possibly nightmares forever. All in all, Mega Man X is a fantastic classic. It has attention to detail, and a level of quality that many would argue hasn't actually been surpassed ever since. With the wide variety of ways to play through this game, and so many different levels of challenge, you could only imagine just how good the replay value here really is if you can get over that hump of some of its difficulty. In the final credits, Sigma promises that he'll be back soon. What are the next eight Mavericks like, and how tough is he on the second go-around? There's only one way to find out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you for the next episode. Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.